The European Union must abandon its policy of sanctioning Russia for its war in Ukraine or risk causing an economic collapse, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban told State Radio on Friday. The EU has imposed several rounds of sanctions against Moscow since Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, targeting the energy sector, banks, the world's biggest diamond mining company and other businesses. Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relations with the Kremlin in the EU, has broken with the majority of European leaders and vocally opposed such sanctions, arguing they did more to damage European economies than they did Russia's. The Hungarian leader on Friday said the EU's sanction regime should be reviewed, because with such a policy of sanctions, energy prices will not come down. It will be painful for those who argued for sanctions. Not for us, because we will see this as a victory, but the other camp has to change because otherwise it will destroy the European economy," he said. Hungary currently holds the six-month rotating presidency of the EU, and has de-emphasized retaliatory measures against Russia in that role. EU leaders, however, are making plans to impose a new round of penalties against Moscow. On Thursday, the European Parliament adopted a resolution demanding the EU step up against Russia's so-called shadow fleet, ships that export Russian oil in violation of sanctions. The legislature also wants the bloc to ban the import of Russian fossil fuels. Orban opposes such a ban, and has leveraged exceptions from the EU during previous rounds of sanctions that allowed landlocked Hungary to continue importing Russian oil and gas, which he argues are essential to sustaining Hungary's economy. The Hungarian leader last week predicted that President-elect Donald Trump would pull U.S. support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. A Trump presidency, Orban has argued, will revive Hungary's sputtering economy, now in a technical recession. The pro-peace presidential candidate won, and now we are waiting for peace, Orban said Friday. NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte visited a battlegroup exercise called Resolute Warrior in Latvia on Thursday. Ruta was there to promote European defense spending and production of military supplies. Ruta said that 2% defense spending by NATO allies is insufficient. It is simply not enough, he stressed, urging members of the Transatlantic Alliance to spend more during a joint press conference with Latvia President Edgars Rinkiewicz. Currently, some 3,500 Allied troops are training at Adatsi military base in Latvia as part of Resolute Warrior. Well, I just think in, uh, in Latvia, the concession is over there. Uh, I love the end, any maybe, part. In my view, there will be a couple of big issues we need to debate over the coming months. Of course, first of all, we have to make sure that Ukraine prevails and that Putin will not win in Ukraine. That is absolute priority number one. But behind that, there are two other big issues at stake. One is that 2%, when you take out the US spending, we are now at 2% in Europe as NATO. It is simply not enough, as the president just was saying. It is simply not enough. So we will need to have the debate on spending more. And another big issue is defense production. We are not producing enough at this moment. We have to do more to replenish our stockpiles uh, to make sure that we are ready to face off any adversary. So these two issues, defense spending and defense production, and all of this working with our partners, the EU, but also in the Indo-Pacific, including Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, the southern neighborhood, this is crucial. The, the United States is an integral part of NATO. They have founded the alliance. They are not into NATO because of some historical reason that they didn't want to repeat the mistake after the First World War, uh, not to repeat the mistake after the Second World War. They know that this is an integral part of their defense, of our defense, our collective defense. And sometimes we talk about frontline states. Let me make absolutely clear, the Netherlands and France and the United Kingdom are frontline states. Uh, we are there together with the Baltics, Poland, all the other member states of NATO. We are all frontline states. There is not uh, a, a frontline state which is closer to Russia or farther away from Russia. And we need the US, and the US needs us, we need each other to work on this. It was Trump who, from 2016 onwards, was pushing us on this part of NATO 
to spend more on defense. Look what's happening on Latvia, moving up to north of 3.5%. Uh, overall, EU NATO now at 2%. And we need to do more. We need to ramp up industry production. So on all of this, we need the US. The US needs us. We are together in NATO all for one. one. A top Russian defense official has attended China's premier military showcase in a show of unity between the countries as Russia continues its military operation in Ukraine. Sergei Shoigu, secretary of the Russian Federation Security Council, was in the southern city of Zhuhai to view Chinese and Russian aircraft and other military hardware on Thursday. They included Chinese J-22 and J-35A stealth fighters that China says are rivals to the latest U.S. jets in the same class. Shoigu, a former defense minister, appeared to be on a mission to reaffirm ties between the countries as Russia's Operation Ukraine has largely stalemated and Moscow has turned to North Korean soldiers to boost its troop numbers. China is not known to have directly provided military support to Russia but has sold a dual-use technologies that could boost its ability to attack Ukrainian targets. China is also a major customer of Russian oil and gas amid international sanctions blocking Russia's access to global financial markets. Weeks before the start of the military operation in Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Beijing and the side signed a lengthy cooperation agreement pledging an unlimited partnership. The countries have held several joint military exercises and aligned their foreign policies to challenge the U.S.-led liberal Western order.